Now, Kenya's Electoral Commission remains on the hot seat as the country heads towards a rerun of the presidential election on October 26th. The opposition has launched what it says will be regular protests until the country's Electoral Commission officials, including the CEO, are replaced. As VOA's Jill Craig reports, the controversy surrounding the IEBC goes back several years. Kenya's opposition says it will boycott the rerun of the presidential election if officials from the Electoral Commission, or IEBC, are not replaced. IEBC cannot begin the process of ensuring an honest election as long as those responsible for the irregularities and illegalities are still lacking in its corridors. IBC has refused to dismiss or suspend them. That is why we are today beginning this peaceful campaign to force them out by public pressure so that the process of fair elections can at last begin. Confidence in the IEBC hit a new low with the nullification of the August 8th presidential election results. Meanwhile, President Uhuru Kenyatta has taken aim at the Supreme Court justices, calling them thugs and accusing them of a judicial coup after they annulled his win. Yet he is still pledging to comply with the judgment. In that ruling, the Supreme Court highlighted the IEBC's refusal of a court order to open its computer servers. Leaves us with no option but to accept the petitioner's claims that the IEBC's IT system was infiltrated and compromised and the data therein interfered with or IEBC's officials themselves interfered with the data or simply refused to accept that it had bungled the wool transmission system and were unable to verify the data. The IEBC's forays into technology have been anything but smooth. In 2013, Kenya held its first elections using biometric voter verification kits. But a breakdown in the system led to a delayed announcement of Kenyatta as winner, with a narrow margin of 50.07 percent of the vote. Odinga took election rigging accusations to court that year too, but lost. In August 2017, the IEBC stumbled again, this time failing to produce the paper verifications of electronically transmitted results. If there is a need um, to remove from within the IBC the human elements that are responsible for the improprieties that occurred, then that really needs to happen with, with um, proper focus and you know, continued squabbling and finger pointing and blaming is just pushing us closer and closer to the precipice. IEBC commissioners were replaced in January after the opposition had taken to the streets in weekly demonstrations, accusing the commissioners of bias. The Constitution gives the Electoral Commission until the end of October to organize a new election. The rerun polls are scheduled for October 26th. Jill Craig, VOA News, Nairobi. When our Kenya's ruling Jubilee Party on Thursday presented Parliament with proposals intended to prevent the Supreme Court from annulling the results of a coming rerun presidential election, as it did the last vote in August. And Jubilee's proposed amendments to election law would, in, would stop the court from invalidating results if the electronics transmission again fails to work smoothly. The manually transmitted results would be final. The amendments would also prevent the court from voiding an election on the grounds of non-compliance with the law, provided the poll was held in line with constitutional principles and the non-compliance did not affect the results of the election. Opposition challenger Raylo Dinga's coalition, NASA, says it will not participate in the rerun vote scheduled for October 26th unless the proposed changes are dropped. Now, for more insight on the proposed laws, David Ojito, a political analyst and uh, um, digital media consultant, uh, joins me live via Skype from Nairobi. Uh, David, uh, these laws, when you read um, the face value, you kind of don't get the real meaning of it. Can you help us understand the first one that would prevent the court, the Supreme Court, from annulling these votes, uh, the election? What does that mean? 
Um, thank you, Vincent, for having me. It's a very interesting argument that has been brought in alongside these laws, but there are developments that are also coming up, and it will be very difficult to pass these laws. In a nutshell, if you read the letter and wording of the Supreme Court verdict, it was very clear and very expressed that IEDC, the electoral body, should conduct the election in accordance with the Constitution and existing electoral laws, full stop. Nothing else. It doesn't matter what number of bills you take to Parliament. It is an exercise in futility and being driven by partisan politics of jubilee. I don't think they can go anywhere. You don't need even a law pupil to explain that to you. But if you read the letter and spirit of the proposed bill, it intends to take away the verification of the electoral process, the transmission exercise, so that you replace the electronic version of transmission with manual where the system fails. No. And it tells you somebody else has got a deal he wants to achieve. Now, uh, David, uh, we know that there are existing uh, laws, uh, election laws. Can these override the existing laws given that Jubilee has a majority in parliament? Uh, it will be difficult. We've had precedents set before where such laws have been passed on the basis of numbers and ignoring critical clauses of the Constitution. The first one was shut down when Kibaki was president, and I think a couple have been shut down when President Huru was having his first term. And that included in, uh, expanding clauses of, of uh, laws, which security amendment laws, which even sought to uh, guard the media. So a president has been sought before, even if in the unlikely event, because they have a majority and a speaker who is uh, jubilee leaning, they can pass those laws. But I can assure you, the president's assent will only give us hours to move to court, and then you can annul the same laws. So no. either way, we are courting a constitution crisis. Uh, uh, very quickly, David, uh, given the timing, do you see this actually interfering with the upcoming uh, rerun on the 26th? Yes, the timing is very critical, and the chairman of the electoral uh, body, Mr. Chebukati, has said that the law is not the problem. They will follow the Supreme Court order to conduct the fresh presidential election in accordance with the existing laws. So there's no question. And he says if, in any case, the law is changed, it means even their logistics will have to change to conform with the new law. So it's pure, precise for chaos. Well, real poor timing, and uh, we just hope there will be peace and there will be an election. David, thank you very much for your insight. Thank you very that, much. Uh, David Ohito is a political analyst and a digital media consultant in Nairobi, Kenya.